Elvis has now officially left the building. All right, ladies and gentlemen, time for the big show. And I'll vamp here for a moment or two while the cast gets up here. Norman Corwin was the kind of writer who could call up CBS Network and say, I've got an idea. And without waiting to hear from him what it was, they would say, when do you want to do it and how long is it? In 1938, he came to them, a little before uh, Christmas time, said, I've got an idea for a show. And they said, fine, when do you want to do it? Christmas Eve, 1938. Okay, how long does it run? 29 minutes, 30 seconds. Have at it. This is what we're going to do today. It was played, as I said before, every Christmas Eve then through the war, and plus it was done in 1944. You have in front of you that, that program. It shows an ad, a newspaper ad, for this show on KQV, uh, KQW, which was KCBS. It was done by Orson Welles, and it has one difference from the CBS versions. It has a lady playing the part of Soto Voce. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the plot to overthrow Christmas. <laughs> the Columbia Workshop presents the Plot to Overthrow Christmas, written by Norman Corwin. Did you hear about the Plot to Overthrow Christmas? Well, gather ye now from Maine to the Isthmus of Panama and listen to the story of the utter inglory of some gory goings on in hell. Now, it happened in Hades, ladies and gentlemen. It happened down there that fiends held a meeting. The fiends held a meeting for the purpose of defeating Christmas. With the aid of a fade, a fade on the radio, we'll take you there with a high and a hady ho to hear firsthand the brewing of a plot down in the deepest Stygian grot. Grot is a political term for grotto. Whenever you hear my voce sotto, or sotto voce, whichever you prefer, it's just I taking pains to make it quite sure that nobody makes a poetical allusion which might in any way create confusion. I return you now to the voice you were hearing before I had to do this interfering. As I was saying, in this Stygian grot, the notables of Limbo hatched a plot, and what went on in the sulfurous hole will soon pick up by remote control. Of course, such a pickup is not made quickly. As a matter of fact, it's rather trickly. You mustn't mind if it sounds erratic. That's merely intraterrestrial static. Don't be surprised if you're deafened by thunder just as we start on our journey under. You'll hear earthquakes and all of the commoner varieties of natural phenomena. And so below, via radio, to regions where legions of the damned go. <laughs> to my favorite concerto. You should look to the improvement of your manners. Uh, sir, if you please, my apologies. Uh, I would not have intruded upon your recital if the matter were not so terribly vital. And the most important matter in the world is piddling. 
when it comes to be compared to Nero's fiddling. Now, what you say may be very true, but I've been sent here to summon you to a great mass meeting of the tortured souls down in the grot of the flaming coals. A meeting? And what for? Why, I mean, what's the big idea? Why can't a fella have some peace down here? Peace, poor soul, can't be found on the premises. This is a region abounding in nemesis. Uh, now you're talking like a travel folder. Tell me, Varlet, before I smolder, why are we meeting? I mean, who's on the spot? No, oh, we're meeting in order to fabricate a plot. A plot against the festival that mortal men comfort in, gladden in again and again. Uh, you see, every year they get together. No, 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 never mind the facts. I, I don't want to hear how mortal man acts. <laughs> The only information about which I care concerns the mass meeting, and who'll be there? Oh, his wickedness, Mephisto, will preside. Uh, naturally. And several of the Borgias will be sitting by his side, and down in front by the sizzling sodium will be many personalities noted for their odium. Hemon, Caligula, Medusa, and the Green. Uh, that's all very nice. But what about... Me. Oh, you'll be sitting in row A center between Ivan the Terrible, the Tormentor, and Circe. Oh, um, mercy. Why, they're both deranged. Do you wish me to see if your seat can be changed? Yes. <laughs> if you will, please. Taste comes first, even though a soul may be eternally cursed. Right, oh. We'll see you at the meeting then. Yes. And now, back to my fiddling again. This is I, the sotto voce person. It should have been explained that Nero is rehearsing. For nothing in particular. He's just that way. While hell's fires burn, he likes to play. It makes him feel a little more at home. It's just an avocation he picked up in Brom. <laughs> The meeting will now come to order, please. I've called you here from over 60 seas of boiling pitch and blaming phosphorus to stop what constitutes a loss for us. <laughs> We've lost prestige, and I greatly deplore that we stand in danger of losing more. In the way of confidence and spirit, we're far from our goal. We're nowhere near it. <laughs> and this is the reason, though we've done well in carrying forward the work of hell, We've left a very big job unfinished. After all these years, there is still undiminished goodwill on Earth every late December because of Christmas. Now, please, remember that as long as this continues to be, the race of man will not belong to me. I will listen now to any suggestions you may want to ask, and then suggestions. Mr. Chairman! Mr. Chairman! Mr. Chairman! Mr. Chairman. Brother Heyman has the floor. Mr. Chairman! You say we've done well in our efforts to sell evil. I say we've done better. We have carried out the letter of your law. We've done what I think is a pretty good job. And I say as a veteran demon... Sit down there, Haman. Enough of this folly. Sit down yourself. You're out of your trolley. Sit down, for I am Ivan the Terrible. Ha, you're telling us why you're unbearable. <laughs> Fellow demons... Please, please, this is no way to act. I warn you, proceed with a little more tact. I want more decorum in this forum. These personal remarks you make must cease. Now, brother Ivan, speak your piece. I merely want to say, in a casual way, that Heman is a radical. He always gets fanatical. Why anyone would think to hear him snort that the work of the devil should just stop short. Anybody think to hear him talking? The dragons and lizards should stop walking the ways of the world. Mr. Chairman, oh. Brother Ivan is a demagogue with a brain like a fly and the manners of a hog. Now he says that... Oh, oh, no. That's enough. You shall hear from others. Surely there must be among you brothers enough venom and malevolence to crush a mortal man's benevolence. It comes to this, are we going to let a little holiday like Christmas get the better of us down here below? 
No, 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 no. Very well then, sirs, very well. Let's go. Let's lay down plans to overthrow this Christmas business with all that guff of holly and mistletoe and stuff. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Brother Caligula may take the floor. Mr. Chairman, I abhor as former emperor anything which curbs our rule. I suggest we start right in manufacturing more sin. Let us give some presents to candy sticks and things to chew. Fruits and nuts and little cakes, poisonous as rattlesnakes. <laughs> Let our subtlest worker be by chloride of mercury. Let us wrap in tinsel bright little gifts of dynamite. <laughs> Work things so that men will fear whenever 1225 draws near. Soon at this rate, if you please, men will hang from Christmas trees. Yeah, oh, uh, my dear Caligula, permit the chair to say you've got something there. And now, with this fine start, let's hear some more. Mr. Chairman, may I level with the devil? Yes, Brother Nero, you may have the floor. With all due respects to Caligula's views, I think there's a better method we can use. I've just discovered lately that men are giving the raz to classical music by making it jazz. They're swinging Bach. And what is keener, they're doing the shag to Palestrina. As a connoisseur of music, of course, I love the works of Rimsky-Korsakov. But today I note, with a bitter shrug, they've made Scheherazade a jitterbug. Oh, much as we admire your clever rhyme, will you get to the point? You're wasting time. Well, I was just about to say when interrupted. That Christmas can easily be corrupted <laughs> if you take and swing all the Christmas carols. Why, think of the evil. I mean... Just barrels and barrels of sacrilege. <laughs> Every time you play a pious song in a profane way. Why, once you entice them to swing Noel, then victory belongs to us fiends. Well, yeah. uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll say Mr. Chairman. Mr. Simon Legree. Thank you, sir. I'd like to say that it seems to me that you all are barking up a, a coolness tree. I think Mr. Nero has made a wrong guess. The way to go about it is to get in Congress. And you bribe a bunch of senators who know their, their oats and just make a purchase of a block of votes, and then they can legislate a situation where they rules old Christmas right out of the nation. They can all get together and pass a law where there ain't going to be no Christmas anymore. Yeah. I think the Legree's suggestion is a beaut. It's very cute. And quite astute. Oh, yes. uh, to me, it sounds a bit impractical. Because you'd have to be so tactical. For instance, now a senator who would sell his vote to our lobbyists might very well go out and become a tool of agencies representing the Yule. By the eternal light, he's right. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Miss Borgia? I think we should all give pause to think about this Santa Claus. He is the man behind the scenes, the symbol of what Christmas means. If we could rub him out, my friend, our troubles would be at an end. Just think how it would tickle us to liquidate St. Nicholas. <laughs> A girl like me could fascinate the guy and then assassinate. Do you think you could do it, pretty one? Or are you sure you wouldn't be by pity one? Sometimes you are an awful tease, my master Mephistopheles. Ain't I murdered several dozens, poisoned uncles, aunts and cousins? Don't my work down here in Hades make me first among the ladies? <laughs> Men of virtue all have cussed me. I am sure that you couldn't trust me. Of that we haven't a particle of doubt, Miss Borgia. I'm sure we all have nothing but kind feelings towards you. <laughs> <laughs> but many times a woman spy, alas, adores her victims. Dames make poor ambassadors. Do you imply that such defects are found inherent in my sex? I do. Well, listen here, old Ironsides. You're headed for some cyanides. You've crossed a Borgia, and you know the consequences that follow. 
Come, come, disciples. This is very bad. There's nothing to be gained by getting mad. Suppose we put the matter to a vote. All those in favor of the motion made by Fien Caligula, which was to shade the glamour of the holiday by using selected poisons of our choosing. All those in favor will please signify by raising to their feet and saying aye. Aye! One vote in favor? Caligula's. Hmm. And those opposed? Aye! The motion is defeated. Up we bring the plan of Brother Nero's. He's to swing the hymns and pious music. All those four will please respond by raising up a paw. Yes, four. Uh, and those against? Aye! Very well. Now, the project of Legree's. Who is there who totally agrees? I do. Legree votes for himself. Hmm. And those opposed? Opposed! And now, all of those in favor of Borgia's cause, it being to eliminate Santa Claus. Aye! 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 aye and aye. those opposed? Uh, it seems to me the woman has a way with them. At least she carried the day with them. <laughs> the motion is carried. Now we will decide which one of us will take Nick for a ride. Hmm. We'll all draw lots and then settle the moot point of who will be sent to execute. This is your old friend, Soto Voce, visiting down where it's eternal noche. Noche is Spanish for night, you know. It's merely a reference just to show that English isn't all I have to go by. Oh well, I guess I missed my calling. I should have been a lobbyist. <laughs> you see, I'm stalling to give them time to finish the votes. Let's see. The weather, now I'm quoting the Daily Hellion. Continued heat both overhead and under feet. Fresh and moderate gases blowing up in gale force and then doing north, going north by westerly. Light showers of brimstone by the evening hours. At least that's what it says here. I'm not fibbing. <laughs> How am I doing with my ad living? <laughs> This is a thing that gabbers have fun with. Say the drawing should soon be done with. We expect the results any moment now. As soon as... The lots have been drawn, and I'm glad to say the honor has fallen Nero's way. <laughs> now, Nero, you are charged with a great task. It's the evilest deed that we could ask a fiend to do. We'll be proud of you. Now, just one moment. I mean, how do I get there, and what do I wear? <laughs> Is it dry or wet there? Is it a fact or fancy or just word of mouth that he lives at the pole? I mean, is it north or is it south? If he dwells in the regions to which I've referred, must I pass through a camp of Admiral Bird? <laughs> uh, what should I use when it comes to the showdown? A gun or a dagger. I mean, so give me the lowdown. Oh, Nero, you sh needn't sound so tragic. You get to Earth by the blackest magic. To create an express elevator, it's simple for an expert spell creator. With a lot of pyrotechnic dazzle, we'll set you off on a hill in Basel, hmm. Switzerland. From there, you will make your way through ice with a blowtorch, and after a while, you're bound to reach Santa's domicile. And once you get there, ah, my dear Nero, all of our work will have gone for zero if you don't succeed in your assignment. Disadvantage of our confinement in limbo is the fact that we only get one chance in all the eternal roulette of circumstance. Yes, I know. If at first we don't succeed, we can try and try again. But there is no need, <laughs> because nothing will come of it, meaning no offense. Do you mind if I take my departure, hence? That, my friends, was a big brass gong. It's used in this story right along to indicate that we're about to travel to points where the plot will further unravel. And now, if Ambassador Nero elects, We'll have another spot of sound effects. Basel, 
Switzerland? Or is it already Donner and Blitzerland? Oh, no. Donner and Blitzerland's 5,000 miles away. Oh. Thank you, mister, and good day. Tell me, stranger, I've been walking inland for weeks. Where am I now? In Finland. Tell me, stranger, because I've lost stock. Where am I now? In Vladivostok. Listen, stranger, after all these centuries of blistering heat, now I have to suffer from freezing feet. I'm wincing with pain from this pesky toe. No speak English. Eskimo. be over the magnetic pole. My watch has stopped. Can, can that be right? I wonder. Ah, oh, a light. A light. In a moment now, you'll hear me knock on Santa's door, and he'll unlock it, never more to lock again. <laughs> Morning. So is doom. <laughs> How do you do, sir? Oh, uh, very well indeed. Uh, and you, sir? Oh, splendidly. Won't you come right in? Take your coat off. I can see your chin is frozen. Also, your hands and knees. Sit down while I get you some antifreeze. No, no, no. Don't bother, sir. I will not be long. I'm about to perpetrate a fearful wrong. In short, I am going to do away take with... Take it easy, take it easy. Do not play with that gun. I know all about you. Really? Haven't I had my agents scout you for weeks? You've come all this way to abolish Christmas. And let me say... And now listen, that I... listen, Santa. I'm no callow stripling. I've read Ernest Hemingway and Kipling. And also the shooting of Dan McGrew. And plenty of detective stories, too. And just to show you uh, what a broad guy I am, I've also read the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam. Do you think that a fellow with his reading so graded could have learned so little as to be dissuaded from a main objective? What? Don't make me giggle. You know, I, w <laughs> I would feel a lot better if you didn't wiggle that, so, that gun so. I mean, much as I'm impressed with your education, I honestly believe that a figure of your station should have given more thought to the ways of man and less devotion to the cult of Pan. By others, no doubt, your wisdom may be prized. But I didn't come here to be criticized. In fact, I came here to dispatch a duty. So don't hand me any of this tutti-frutti. If you have any last words you want to say, then spill them. I mean, I haven't got all day. Uh, what's the rush? Unless I've counted wrong, the polar day has always been six months long. Well, after I've disposed of you, I've got to hurry right back to hell. Or they'll begin to worry. Not about you, but about your career in homicide. Do you think the mere loss of you would make them hysterical? They're only interested in numerical. You think so? Mephisto wants to rule just as much of humanity as possible for reasons of personal vanity. By the sticks? You're right. To think that he'd dare. I mean, are there any ladies here? Will you permit me to swear? Now, my answer to that is an emphatic no. There are several lady dolls in the toy room below. Oh, Claudius. Oh, Cassius. Oh, Nathaline, what a fool I've been. What a fool I've been. But wait, I, I think I see what you're after. <laughs> you're as clever as a big-time Roman grafter. <laughs> you remind me now of my royalty, just to get me in a mood for disloyalty. Do you think I could be that meanly deceptive to Satan? Why, Santa, I'm keenly perceptive. I can see right through all your clever ruses. Nero can be plenty foxy when he chooses. <laughs> I'll have you know that I'm partly a dreamer, partly a wit, partly a schemer. I'm part philosophical and also part mystic. And I suppose you fancy that you're highly artistic. Fancy? Why, I have such a sense oh, of Oh, don't hand me a helping of tutti-frutti. 
Any creature who really had beauty in his soul would appreciate Christmas. He, he would know that the whole idea of the holiday was one of such power that all the fiends below would gnash their fangs and glower. Yet never in a million years could it do harm because it has a glory, a greatness, a charm that you know nothing about. That's so. The spirit that it venerates, the good cheer that it generates, are things far, far beyond you. For all your wealth, no man on earth could sell you these. Am I so cursed as that? Will you, t will you tell me, please, what beauties there may be that I've never seen? Ah, uh, have you ever seen a Christmas tree tall and green? smelling of woodlands covered with a sheen of silveriness, its branches bending low with the fruits of human kindness instead of snow. No. Have you ever closely witnessed what takes place any Christmas morning on a young child's face, or perceived any beauties purer than the joys distilled in the hearts of little girls and boys? Have you ever watched a fire in a fireplace on a Christmas Eve? or listen to grace at a table heavy with fruits and cakes and all the wonders that a kitchen makes, fowls and pastries, wines and meats, and nuts and raisins and candied sweets. Have you ever seen mistletoe hanging from a ceiling? In the frosty air, have you ever heard a far bell pealing? Have you ever come back from a sleigh ride, tingling and your feet keeping time with the sleigh bells jingling? Have you ever seen the beauty of a sprig of holly, or felt for a moment how it feels to be jolly? Golly! Have you ever known how exceedingly pleasant it is to unwrap a Christmas present? Did you ever know how much cheer it lends to be wished a Merry Christmas by all of your friends? Did you ever experience the fun of giving? Do you know at all of the joys of living? I, I guess I don't. For, for all of me, I never knew such things could be. Just, just think how long in ignorance I've slept. <laughs> it must have been the company you kept. Well, I was a wicked tyrant once, you know. Ah, uh, yes. But that was centuries ago. You had no real way of knowing. Perhaps. Well, I get. I guess that I'll. I'll be going. I. I, I really should. Should be getting on my way. But do you have to? Don't you want to stay? Well, well, you see, I, I'm, I'm just a bit... Ed Embarrassed? Why, yes, sir. Now, don't look so harassed. I know why it is you came and who it was that sent you, but that's all done with. I take it you repent you of all your past mistakes. With many pains and aches of conscience. Then you are welcome here. Please take off your hat, your coat, your muffler also. Take your spat off. What happened to the other one? Oh, no matter. You're pretty thin. You'll presently be fatter. I serve good food here. I'll get you a platter of steak and mushrooms. Medium or rare? I'll bet that you're hungry as a bear. Now, just sit down. That's it right over there and tell me, would you have some wine or beer? I never touched the stuff myself, but I managed to keep on hand a little rye for purposes medicinal. I mean, your chin should be unfrozen. What a state it's in. You, you know, a, a while ago, you asked me if I understood good cheer. I do so now, St. Nicholas. I see it standing. Here, I, I, I want to ask you something, sir. No, 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 no please, no, don't give a yelp, but is there any sort of work to do where, where, where I could be of help? Oh, indeed there is. Indeed there is, and I'm glad you asked me. I have so many toys to make this year that the job got past me. But first, you sit and eat this bowl. 
I've got a little trifle I'd like for you to see. So will you sit right down here and stifle your curiosity? I'll get it for you right away. It's down the hall a peak. You know, uh, who, who'd ever think it? I mean, will wonders never cease? At last, after all these centuries, I, I, I'm so happy I could buzz. It shows you what a lot a little Christmas spirit does. As emperor, I envied oft the cheerfulness of peasants. And now well, I... Well, here it is now. Now, Nero, my boy, by way of Christmas presents, I offer you this little gift. But Santa, for what reason? A very good one, sir, to wit, compliments of the season. Well, go ahead, open it. Well, why stand there so reflecting? Well, I, I'm just collecting thoughts, St. Nick. My thoughts, I, I, I'm just collecting. Just think how far a tiny bit of fellowship would carry us. Oh, well. What? Well, well, well I, I say. Mm. Oh, yeah. No, what's this? What's, what's this? What? It's a Stradivarius. What? Why, thank you. Thanks a million times. I, I don't know what to, to, to say to you. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do, St. Nick. I'll start right in and play for you. I'll play, I'll play, I'll play, I'll play, I'll play all night and day for you. Fine. Now, here's some music. I'm sure you'll play it well. It's a little piece entitled Noel, Noel. I, remember me, your sotto voce friend. I've just come back to tell you that this story is at an end. You've been listening to The Plot to Overthrow Christmas, written by Norman Corwin, produced for broadcast legends by Dan Odom, Bob Brown, and Peter Cleveland, and directed by Dan Odom. Fred Lacoste was Nero, Terry Lowry, Sato Voce, Mark Rollins, the Messenger Courier, Peter Cleveland was Mephisto, Matt Elmore, Heyman, and two alien voices, Dave Jackson, Ivan the Terrible, and two alien voices, Frank Bliss was Caligula, and our resident fiddler, Michael Bennett was Simon Legree, Carolyn Compton was Lucretia Borgia, and Dan Odom was Santa Claus. Sound control, recorded sound effects were provided by Bob Brown and live sound effects executed by Linda Odom. I am your most humble announcer, Bob Safford, and this is the Columbia Broadcasting System. To also add to the to the list of people who were taking part in this, our new sound man Dennis Brown. Give him a, give him a hand. <laughs>